Have you fallen behind in what you're studying or at work? We all go through times when for whatever reason, you get a little bit behind in what you need to achieve. So don't worry, because in this video, I'm gonna give you some of my top tips to help you get back on track and catch up on work. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Alex. I'm a surgeon and the founder of a few edtech companies. And on this channel, we focus on learning and human performance to help you live healthier, wealthier, happier, and more productive lives. I've been through some really busy periods when I'm juggling lots of work commitments or when I'm studying for exams around work and sometimes you just get a little bit behind where you want to be and it can feel like an uphill struggle to get back on track and things can start to seem overwhelming. To help you catch up, I'm gonna split this video up into five top tips. I've personally applied these principles to help me get back on track if I've fallen behind and you should be able to apply them to pretty much anything. If you're not yet a subscriber, do hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments below what you're doing to get back on track if you're behind in anything. So let's get into things, starting out with the first thing that I do if I find myself behind. A few years into medical school, I was running a business and was also revising for clinical exams. Trying to juggle this and sports and social commitments meant that I fell behind some of my friends when preparing for exams. They were all about two or three modules further through their revision than I was and had spent way longer in the library. Now at the time, I found this pretty stressful and if you've fallen behind, you might be feeling a little bit anxious and so my first top tip is a fairly simple one you can apply right now, which is to just acknowledge that you're behind and don't beat yourself up about it. By comparing yourself to your peers or overthinking things, you're actually putting more pressure on yourself and building things up into bigger issues than they need to be. Having the insight that you need to get back on track is important but making yourself feel worse is really counterintuitive. Now, if I find that I'm a bit behind in my work, I simply acknowledge this and I try not to add any emotion to the fact that I'm behind. Instead, I attack the problem head on using some of the next tips that I'm gonna discuss. So the first practical thing that I'll do is I'll jump straight into Evernote or into my diary or my revision timetable or whatever I'm using as a task manager or to-do list. I'll basically write out the key tasks that need doing that I'm behind on and add them into a prioritized to-do list. Simply offloading tasks you're worrying about into a to-do list is simple, but it helps you get the work that needs doing out of your head and into a list that can then be broken down into subheadings and basically ordered and prioritized into bite-sized chunks. Rather than just listing out every task that needs doing, order and prioritize your to-do list with the most vital and impactful things at the top and the least important things towards the end. When I started to prioritize my to-do list in my diary, rather than just trying to get through a randomly ordered list of tasks, it was an absolute game changer. So spending some time ordering that list is a vital step. Specifically for studying, if I'm behind in my exam preparation, or if I'm getting new material on a weekly basis when I'm already slightly behind, I'll try and group things together in my task manager and group similar topics together by order of importance. For example, if I'm behind on going over lectures or maybe I've missed some lectures for whatever reason, I'll try and group these together in my task manager and then prioritize lectures or topics by how well I already know something and how likely it is to come up at the exam. If I'm behind more generally in work that needs to be done by a specific deadline and it's just kind of hanging over me, I'll do two things here in terms of task management. Firstly, I prioritize things based on importance and deadlines. And secondly, I'll try and prioritize the easier and faster tasks first so that I can tick these off, get them done, and get me back into that flow state of winning goals. Now, if you're really behind, you might have lots and lots of tasks to do. And so my next tip is to be pretty brutal and to challenge yourself to cut down your to-do list into only the most essential elements which are gonna have the biggest impact at getting you back on track. I would often think that I needed to spend an equal amount of time learning about all parts of the medical syllabus when preparing for medical exams, when in reality, there were some areas that I already knew pretty well, which I could spend less time on, and other areas that were high yield and which I perhaps didn't know as well. If you're studying, another helpful tip here is to remember that not every lecture, workshop, or clinical experience is absolutely essential. I remember having some fairly random lectures on topics that in hindsight were never going to be part of the exam but at the time, I still felt like I needed to cover them. Similarly, in a work environment, if you have a long to-do list of things you need to complete, in addition to prioritizing them by importance, it's important that you ask yourself, are these tasks things that I absolutely need to do that only I can do? If someone has asked you to do work, or maybe you've even set yourself a task or a goal, really question how important it is and how long you need to spend on it. If it's actually not that vital, then cut it out from your to-do list and be as brutal as possible 
help you save time and focus on a hyper-prioritized set of tasks in your task manager. My next tip is really to reevaluate the work and effort that needs doing. A lot of the time, if I got behind in something, it was actually because I had made more work for myself or I was assuming that I needed to do more work than was actually necessary. A good example of this is the person who simply lists out every single part of their syllabus from A to Z and assumes that they need to read through every single lecture slide and basically just spends time studying rather than actually focusing on understanding and learning key topics that come up regularly in exams. In practical terms, this is where using evidence-based study techniques like active recall are really helpful or using proven time-saving techniques to write out essays or complete tasks. For example, rather than reading through all of your lecture notes, which is super time consuming, I would have my notes and a textbook as reference material for reading around a topic to aid my understanding, but the majority of my time would be spent actually doing practice questions. More specifically, I'd use online question banks and past papers with pre-existing questions created. This was really useful when I was studying for postgraduate surgical exams around my day job and on course as a surgeon. And if I found myself spending too long reading around a topic, I'd challenge myself to get back on track into doing the questions and testing my knowledge to keep me efficient and ensure that I cover the high yield topics and those which I found the most challenging. So now that you've prioritized, it's time to actually organize your time to get these tasks done. I usually have a single task that I focus on each day. And if I'm behind in some work, I'll plan out a few catch up days where I'm focusing on the tasks I've prioritized as the most important to help me get back on track. I'll usually use time blocking to block out some time in my diary and set myself a deadline to get all the work to get me back on track done. Part of time management when getting back on track is also prioritizing catch up work over less essential things in your diary. This might mean being a little bit more stoic and sacrificing some social arrangements or working a little bit later or working over a weekend. For me, I'll sometimes cancel some meetings and switch up my gym rest day so that I can focus on catching up as a priority. This helps to alleviate any anxiety associated with being behind as you're attacking the problem head on. And if you're efficient with how you're working, you might even be able to get ahead by using some of these extra days. So this bonus final tip is for those of you like me who've been a bit of a perfectionist and feel like you need to cover everything in detail if you're studying or you need to get that work looking absolutely perfect before you submit it or finish it. If you are behind, perfectionism is a form of procrastination and you need to really focus on getting those tasks completed. It's more than likely that work or studying that you think isn't quite up to your high perfectionist standard is actually way more acceptable and is in fact really good. This is certainly true for studying where you really want to be getting through key concepts rather than overlearning every single topic in detail. The same goes for work. Often something that is good enough and is submitted quickly is much better than something that is over-engineered and has taken much longer to put together. For me, this was more of a mindset challenge than anything. And when I realized that if I just focused on getting the task done and really backing my process and ability to do things well, it meant I could get things completed much more quickly rather than spending ages trying to get things absolutely perfect. Now we cover time management and evidence-based study techniques in this video. I actually have a great video about time blocking and the whole evidence-based learning series, which we're gonna put right up over here. As I mentioned at the top of the video, I'd love to hear about any tips you have for catching up on schoolwork or job work or studying or whatever it is you might've fallen behind in in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being a subscriber to the channel. Do hit subscribe if you haven't already done so and I'll catch you again in the next video.